In this video, I'm going to talk about how vitamin C helps to eliminate viruses from the system. People have used vitamin C supplementations to improve immune health and prevent colds for a long time. This paper was published back in 1993, and they're looking at ultra marathon runner, runners and using vitamin C to reduce, because it's very common for these people to develop upper upper respiratory tract infections after the big massive ultra marathon. And so they used 600 milligrams of vitamin C and this reduced the upper respiratory tract infections in in, in ultra ultra marathoners to varying degrees. And the same in the same study the authors said that uh, supplemental vitamin C may reduce the severity of such infections in even people who are sedentary. So let's look at how uh, vitamin C works. Now, there's been a lot of research since 1993. This is 2017, a review article looking at the, the many aspects of vitamin C on immune function. This table discusses four domains, epithelial barriers, phagocytes, lymphocytes, and inflammatory mediators. We're going to look today at phagocytes. Now, macrophages are the most is, are, the, are the most abundant phagocytes in our system. Now, what phagocytes do is they engulf, they eat, they engulf, process, neutralize, eliminate dead tissue debris after injury. They eliminate old cells that need to be removed and replaced, and they go after infectious agents. They go after bacteria and virally infected cells. So this article gives us a nice picture of a macrophage and how it works. So here's the picture. We're going to simplify it, make it bigger. Boom. There we go. Simple. So I eliminated everything except for here's your vitamin C, ascorbic acid, and here is ascorbic acid again, vitamin C. So you can see this cell is a macrophage. Okay, so up here what you see is this macrophage phagocytizing an old dying neutrophil. And so this activity of phagocytosis is inhibited by free radicals. Whether you're in science or not, odds are you've heard of free radicals. So they're produced in excess when we pig out on uh, refined sugar, flour, and refined oils, when we become obese, when people are hyperglycemic, diabetic, they live in a chronic state of uh, excess free radical production. So excess free radicals are going to inhibit phagocytosis directly and indirectly by activating this substance here, which is known as an alarmin. So this alarmin turns on, and you can see it is going to also, this block means inhibit. So an arrow means stimulate. So this is, this is inhib inhibition. So free radicals are going to inhibit phagocytosis directly and indirectly through the alarmin. So here comes vitamin C. We take vitamin C, and vitamin C inhibits free radicals. So if you inhibit free radicals, you're going to inhibit the inhibition that it would otherwise occur. And so you release the macrophage to do its phagocytic work. By reducing the free radicals, we also inhibit the alarmin and thereby, once again, release the macrophage to do its uh, viral cell engulfing activity and overall cleanup job that it does. So ascorbic acid will, will inhibit the free radicals directly, as we see here, and ascorbic acid will inhibit the alarmin here. And that is how, or that is one way in which uh, vitamin C uh, improves immune function in the context of restoring phagocytic activity to our important macrophages. So, you know, the next question would be, well, how much should I take? And no one really knows for sure how much we should take of vitamin C. I'm going to give you an idea based upon some pretty cool papers. So first, we should think, all right, well, how many people are stressed out by, more people are stressed out by the lockdowns, and the fear of getting sick and dying, that is, the stress response is far more catastrophic for the, for the broad population than actually be infected by the virus itself because the vast majority of people who are infected will have mild to no symptoms and clear it easily, but they still live in stress. So for those at risk and those who are stressed out, or both, 
uh, we need to think about vitamin C in, in the context of dealing with the stress response. So this is a paper published in a journal thoracic disease back in 2020, and they looked at vitamin C being an essential stress hormone during sepsis, which is a bad bacterial infection. So they compared, and I'll show you here, two fish, a sturgeon and a lake trout. So you can see blue means baseline cortisol, red means stressed levels of cortisol. So a sturgeon that produces vitamin C, notice its baseline cortisol, when it's stressed, you get it gets minimal elevation of cortisol. Vitamin C is, is, is the big factor. We go to a lake trout, similar low levels of cortisol at baseline, but massive increase in cortisol when stressed. Why? They don't produce vitamin C. Humans don't produce vitamin C. So here's our basal cortisol, and it triples once we're stressed. So my view is that we should probably all be taking adequate vitamin C to help combat the stress response, which will also help improve macrophage function to, to uh, clear viral infected cells, bacteria, old cells, dying cells, and damaged cells from, uh, from injury. So this paper was published back in 2002, and they looked at 60 people where they gave vitamin C to, 60 people got placebo. How much did they get? They took uh, 3,000 milligrams per day, 1,000 milligrams three times per day. So that's what they did. And they did it for 14 days, and they applied a social stress test that involved public speaking and mental arithmetic. And this is the conclusion they found, that those who took the vitamin C had a, had a, a, a lower blood pressure response, they, or less of a blood pressure response. They had less subjective stress, less state anxiety, and they normalized their cortisol faster after the stressor went away. So how much should we take? I cannot say for sure, but I think that this is a good starting point. And some people will need to take more. Some people will need to take less. The typical way that people operationally uh, look at vitamin C supplementation is to dose it up until you get diarrhea and then draw back. That's an operational way that people tend to dose it. But I think that, and for some people, 3,000 milligrams a day will give them diarrhea, so you got to back off. So you just got to look at 3,000 as a goal, and you can raise or lower based upon one's need would be the best way to, to look at it. I discuss vitamin C in my new book in the context of immune health. So this is the new book. It's available right through. You can click right through from the link below to get to my Amazon page. You can go through. You can actually look at the table of contents for all of these books. Now, I will tell you this much. Obesity is the biggest issue for COVID-19. Obese people are the primary human vectors at spreading uh, COVID-19. So the Kindle version of this Weight Loss Secrets book is only 99 cents, and the hard copy is like 13 bucks. It's really cheap. Uh, and then you can also get volume discounts at dflame.com. You can see volume discounts for all the books are available 